We're going kayaking, beach friends. Normally, I would show you some nice marina shots, but I didn't have time for that. A storm was headed my way, and I didn't want to wait to get out to the beach, and I didn't want to be on the water when the storm came through. So I got to the marina, paid the launching and parking fees, and I was on my way. Now today was a super low tide day. So I opted for Dickman's Island and the sandbars in front of it to go exploring. It's part of the 10,000 Island system near Marco Island. So you will need a boat or a kayak to get to where we're headed. The beach is going to be gloriously messy and we're gonna find some sand dollars and a bunch of other great shells. So if you're ready to get out there, let's go to the beach. Now these people got the right idea. Talk about getting out there early. Although they were fishing. They uh, saw their fishing equipment and their boat there, but we are here for some shells and see what else we can find over here on this sandbar. So technically, I guess right now I'm on an island, but it then dips down and normally all that other area in front of us is covered by water or depending on the tides. So let's take a quick look and see what that looks like. So there's Dickman's Island and this is where we're going to be really this area in here. And so a lot of times this is covered by water, but right now it's nice and dry. I'm heading down to the water. I found this lovely calico scallop on the way, but notice I didn't slow down. And then this is for my sand dollars to hopefully protect them. Hopefully I'll find a couple. So I came prepared. Oh, and I had to just stop for a second to check this out. This is a shark eye sand collar. So that's how the shark eyes lay their eggs in that weird little collar. I had to stop and quick check that out. Okay, we made it. The rain is not here yet, so we're gonna have a little bit of time before the weather turns on us. Yeah, there it is over there to the right. It's a coming, that's okay. We're ready for it, we're prepared. And the beach looks fantastic. There's stuff all over the place. So we're gonna spend a bunch of time seeing what kind of goodies are here. Looks like we got ourselves a banded tulip. No beach stuff, a little bit of sand, not beach stuff, no problem. Lovely banded tulip. And a top snail. So this is a jujube top snail. Very cool little shell. I've only ever found one alive. So that's kind of kind of remarkable. And here we have a lettered olive. Not too lettery. We'll find more. We'll admire the letters, but that is a lettered olive. Nice size, nice and shiny. And then here is another banded tulip, although this one's a little bit more bleached out, probably been sitting on the beach a little bit longer. Let's see, here we have a lettered olive. That's a little bit more lettery. It gets its name from the letters on the shell. So if you have an M or a W name, you're in really good luck with those shells. Now the weather is a common. I did check on land and I checked again when I was here just to double make sure there's gonna be no lightning because rain is one thing, it's fine, no big deal, you get wet, but do not underestimate or mess around with lightning. It absolutely happens, people do get injured. Here is a lightning whelk, very nice. Juvenile, kind of on the medium to small size, they do get very big, although those are very hard to find. And here we have another lettered olive. Nice find so far, okay. A calico scallop. That is actually a really nice size calico scallop. They only get to 2.7 inches, kind of a random number, but it is what it is. This is a pear whelk that does look like it's had a couple holes drilled into it by another animal that drills holes, tries to eat the insides. And here we have a tiny little lightning whelk. All righty. Here is a lace murex. Now, compared to the apples, the laces are a little bit more streamlined. They're like a little bit slimmer of a shell. And then when you look at the apple murex, they're, they're more bulbous, you know, like they look like they're squashed. So that first one was a lace. This is an apple murex. They do look similar because they have like a little bit of leafiness going on to them. 
but that is a lace and then an apple murex. This, if I can pick it up, is a little horse conch. That's another example of a shell that can get quite big, very treasured. I've only found one. Uh-oh, okay, so I was keeping an eye on the weather and it is really kind of bearing down, but you do notice it kind of breaks up a little bit, so it's not really gonna be torrential rain, and I went and flipped cameras, so we are gonna use the waterproof camera for a little while. Found this horse conch, nice size. And another lettered olive, look how shiny. So pretty. And a fighting conch. That is a Florida fighting conch and on the juvenile side. Yeah, <laughs> it's raining, but again, what are you gonna do? I didn't wanna wait. Low tide was right when I got to the marina, so I wanted to take advantage of as much low tide as I possibly could. So I decided to just, you know, tough out a little bit of rain. Another lettered olive, very cool. Oh, another lightning whelk. Oh, that's a nice size one. All right, that is a decent lightning whelk. Oh, look at that. That is a moon snail. That is a shark eye moon snail. Very, very cool. Oh, that's terrific. That's a great find. Awesome. Yeah, it is, uh, it is raining, but you know what? Look, nobody else is out. So I don't know what that really says about me other than maybe I'm just really dedicated or I just really wanted to, again, take advantage of the low tide, but a little bit of rain wasn't going to stop me. And I did walk around in the shallow water for a while because that's where you're really going to find big, or at least in my experience, you're, you're going to find those bigger shells in the water. But I was rewarded with a lovely sand dollar. That'll go in my handy dandy Folgers can. Awesome. And another. Awesome. And that'll clean up great. I'm not worried about the color so much. <gasps> right on. So that is a lightning whelk. That is a decent. I don't think I've found one that big in quite a while. You can find the smaller ones, but you know, once they start getting big, much more rare. Very cool lightning whelk. All right, we can switch back to my regular camera. Awesome. And the storm has gone by at this point. Now you'll see over there, those buildings, that's where I did that secret super low tide shelling. And that was an option for today. But since it was going to be such a low tide for a while, I figured I would kayak and take my chances out on these sandbars and islands. And I have to say, so far, it's been pretty decent. I am not disappointed with my decision. All right, that is a crowned conch. Oh dear. Well, it's most of a crowned conch. Here's another little lightning whelk. Those are very easy to find. At least down here they are. And an auger. Gotta appreciate those spiky little shells. And another nice bright orange horse conch. The little ones are orange. They lose that orange as they get bigger. Don't know why. All right, that is an apple murex. It's got great texture to it, so I'm probably definitely gonna try to clean that up. That's a terrific apple murex. And another pear whelk. It's got a nice little spiral on top. Generally speaking, it'll have those brown like stripes on it. So that's a pear whelk. All right, here we have a shark eye. Now, I did not know that there's a real shark eye and a false shark eye. This is a false shark eye because that area right there is kind of gouged out. So when you see a snail that looks like this, it's, it's a shark eye, but I really like to know. So just in case you were wondering, that is a false shark eye. And a Florida worm snail. These guys just totally freestyle when they're making their little shells. Very cool, a Florida worm snail. And a calico scallop of the bright orange variety. Very pretty. Okay, we have another bivalve. This is a calico clam. 
Very colorful little guys. Ooh, very colorful little, that's another calico scallop. So we have a calico scallop and a calico clam. Awesome. Oh, check it out. Okay, first of all, I love spiny jewel boxes and this is a hinged spiny jewel box. And typically they've got really nice spikes when you find the hinged ones. Oh, so I'm really happy with that very cool hinged spiny jewel box. And a turkey wing. All right, it's a little bleached out, but that is a turkey wing. What I, yep. There is another shark eye. Oh, that's really pretty too. Of course, I got to do the flip. What do we got? Yep. See that gouged area out there? We know that that is a false shark eye. There we just, I went a little quick the first time. So that little gouged out area is what tells you whether that is a real or a false shark eye. Let's see what's down here. All right, we have half of a banded tulip. Here's another spiny jewel box. A little spike on there, like one of those rhino shells, which isn't a thing, I'm just calling it that. That is an arc. This is a surf clam. That is a jingle. So those are more of the common, like the stuff that's really pretty much always on the beach. Oh, a gaudy nautica. So that is a colorful moon snail, but it's not really in great shape. So I'm just gonna leave that there. Here is a broad ribbed cardita. Now that's another very common along with, you know, some of the cockles, the slipper snails. Oh, hello, lightning whelk. All right, I'm gonna hold on to you. What else we got? All right, another calico scallop, complete with a couple barnacles. Oh man. All right, so that is an alphabet cone. Cones are super cool, but that one, that's a little bit too much of a project for me. So I'm gonna leave that at the beach. Another spiny jewel box, very cool. And while I'm here, I might as well pick up this little crowned conch while I'm at it as well. So really fun, just kind of digging through, seeing if a treasure will present itself. Here's a little bay scallop. So lots and lots of stuff. Another banded tulip. Now there's banded tulips and then there's true tulips. Bandeds are much more common and you can tell by those dark, very deliberate, evenly spaced lines. And this is a very common shell. This is a cross barred Venus clam, but the insides have some really great color sometimes. So it has that cross hatched pattern and then on the inside it's typically very, either bright orange or that dark purple. So they're super common, but hey, they're still kind of cool. All right, and I really was trying my luck in the water and I wasn't, you know, I really wasn't finding much. So I kept, ended up back on the beach, seeing what else I could find. All right, just a piece, yeah. <laughs> now I was really hoping a shell would be attached to that piece, but oh well. That is a sand dollar that I'm being careful with. I kind of dig underneath it so I don't break it when I pick it up from the beach. So that's, it's gonna dig underneath it. Give it a little rinse, see if these guys are keepers. Why, yes they are. Too lovely, and these are five whole keyhole sand dollars. Those are the kind of sand dollars we have down here in Southwest Florida. What do we got? All right, another spiny jewel box that's super spiny. Awesome, nice day for spiny jewel boxes. And another sand dollar, perfect little sand dollar. Now I'm really feeling glad I brought my, my little container for them. <gasps> oh, it's probably alive. When you see a big, yeah, look how pretty, but that is alive. So that is a live lightning, a gorgeous live lightning whelk. And you see it's, it, it's already got himself all back in that little hole. Sorry, sorry friend, we'll just tuck you back in, let you finish your thing. And another perfect sand dollar, hey, I came prepared. I will take that sand dollar. And this is an angel wing, which unfortunately is chipped on the end, kind of discolored. If it was whole, I might try to, you know, bring it back to life, but it's broken, womp womp. 
Another top snail. Very nice. And that is one of those jujube top snails. Now, what's kind of interesting with these guys, did you see that shiny, or it looks white, but it really is shiny and iridescent, and that's called nacre, like that. So that is nacre from a pen shell, which typically is that purplish iridescent color, unlike the top snails that really kind of have that white iridescent color. So really kind of fun, what kind of neat stuff you'll find at the beach. Oh, what do we got here? Okay, so this is a Gulf Oyster Drill, which I typically have a really hard time identifying. This one happens to be in like pristine condition, so I can definitely tell what it is. So that is a Gulf Oyster Drill that looks just like a whole bunch of other things. Oh, what do I see? A keyhole limpet. Awesome. I never find limpets or very, very rarely. This is, I don't know, maybe only like the second or third limpet I've found. So that was really exciting. And another banded tulip. All right, very sandy. Let's see what that looks like cleaned up a little bit. Oh, very pretty. Yeah, it's got a little white beach stuff. That's not a problem. That'll come right off. All right, here we have a nutmeg, common nutmeg. Let's see what kind of condition. Eh, it's in pretty good condition. Still got a little bit of lumpiness to it. Those typically are kind of like a beaded surface. Now this is funny. All right, just a little sandy shell. Not, you know, it's fine. But then I washed it off and it's gorgeous. Look at the detail on those little pieces that are sticking out. So that is a juvenile lace murex. Just about perfect. Oh, it's beautiful just beautiful all right you see what i see i know there's lots of stuff but what i see little piece of orange sticking out and we got ourselves another little horse conk Woohoo! and another banded tulip i'll help myself i don't find them all that often it seems when they come down here it's every third shell is a banded tulip uh-oh short spined sea star oh so cute and I'm sure she probably would have been fine, but there is a little bit of water right there. So we'll just help a fella out. Well, hi, Sand Dollar. Why don't you come with me? You are perfect. And you should come be friends with all the other Sand Dollars I have. All right. I thought for sure there was going to be a critter in it. That's a Florida fighting conch. That is a lovely Florida fighting conch. And now it's got all that beach stuff on it, but the beach stuff comes off no problem with 100% bleach. Now, here's a shark eye, and I was like, oh, man, that would have been fabulous. And that does indeed look like a true shark eye. But it, I mean, for me, it's just a little bit worse for wear. I'm not really good with making things with shells, so I leave that at the beach for somebody else. Now, I just wanted, it was windy, so that storm had come through really kind of kicked the, the gulf up. It is super windy. And you'll see there's a couple other people here at this point. So I guess the tours resumed and everybody figured, all right, the water's gone, let's go back out there. So I'm having a really great time. There's almost nobody here. It's super low tide, plenty of beach to roam around, plenty of stuff to check out. So I'm having a good old time. Here we have yet another banded tulip. And I wanted to show you, so these are all Sunray Venus clams. And look how different. A lot of times that, there's black on them. This one happens to just be variations of that purplish kind of brownish color. That one has a hole in it that was drilled by a shark eye because shark eyes have a very specific way of drilling the holes. It's called countersunk. So I know a shark eye drilled a hole in that particular Sunray Venus clam. We have another little top snail. And that's how they start with these spiral snails. Starts just a little itty bitty shell, and then it just, or snail, and then it kind of grows and spirals around and gets bigger. So just kind of, kind of interesting. That is another tulip. Hard to say, I want to say that's, I don't know, a tulip of some sort. Here's another, I'm going through some tinies. What do we got? All right, there's another top snail. Not too tiny. I do see another little itty bitty top snail. Yeah, <laughs> itty bitty. 
So they'll just start and they'll just grow and keep circling around until it gets bigger. So in addition to the regular nice shells, there's also some pretty good tinies here. And then here's another drill of some sort. I don't know what mauve mouth drill, maybe. Not good with those little drills. They look just too much like other stuff. Lots of fun beach things here though, for sure. <gasps> okay, cool. So this is also a moon snail, but this is called a colorful moon snail or Gaudinotica. I don't know why this particular shell has two different names, but it does. So you can tell these from the shark eyes because the pattern on them, only the gaudies will have those brown different stripings on it. Here is another banded tulip. Very nice. And another gaudy nautica. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, real nice. So that's the colorful moon snail. Oh, it's so pretty. Check this out. All right, I never find these. I know it might look like a banded tulip, but this is a true tulip. And I rarely, you know, rarely, I'd say for every 30 banded tulips, I find one true one. That's a nice size, beautiful color. Really, really happy with that. Another apple murex. All right, this one's a little sandy. Let's see, there we go. That's a decent shape. And again, I look for the texture to see if it's beach worn, if it's kind of, kind of rounded it all, but it had some nice texture to it. And that is a shot of the beach with all the goodies. Anything bit, I mean, anything that's a little bit bigger, I'd definitely check that out. It usually never ends up being anything, but you never know. Be curious. It's paid off for me anyway. So that is a pear whelk. Not in great shape. Nice size, but it's, you know, it's a little beat up. So that is a beat up pear whelk. Here we have a banded tulip. Yet another. Apparently they're really common down here. At least on these islands they are. Yay! Another pear whelk. Oh, real pretty. Nice color. Decent size. Okay, that is another crowned conch with not great color. Here's another apple murex. And I can't tell beneath the sand. It looks, yeah, it looks okay. I'll probably hang on to that just in case. Here is another one. So this one's a little bit more beach worn. You can kind of tell it's kind of more flattened, like those, those really, what do you want to call it? Ridges and all the other kind of delicate, pat not patterns, but textures to it get a little bit worn down. So I'll leave those for someone else. Oh, well, while I'm here, might as well pick up this banded tulip. We have been seeing many, many shells and lots of beach, but you know what? Let's enjoy the view around us and go for a little walk. Another gaudy nautica. Yep, colorful moon snail. Oh, that's so pretty. Looks a little pitted. I'm gonna hold on to it anyway. It's okay. And that is a cone, that's a Florida cone. Almost no color on it, but it's got a nice shape to it. So I'm gonna hold on to that Florida cone. And here is a pear whelk, yet another. Pretty good day for pear whelks too. Finding my share of pear whelks. And it was windy. And I <laughs> should have taken this as a clue. We'll talk about that next week in detail. But for now, we're just gonna enjoy our time here. <gasps> I spy an alphabet cone and I'm just like, what? Because the color is fantastic. And I think it's in good shape too. So I'm gonna wash that off. Oh, it's gorgeous. Now these get their name because a lot of times people see letters in the shell also. So in addition to the lettered olive, 
This is called the alphabet comb because you will see little letters in it and it is gorgeous, great color. The top has color. The aperture is not chipped or anything. Gorgeous, gorgeous alphabet cone, super fine. And this might be a piece or it might be whole. You never know. And that is another great lightning whelk find. Oh, okay. Definitely going to hold on to that. It's got great color. It is harder, you know, the bigger they get, the harder it is to find them. So that's, you know, it's a decent sized lightning whelk. Contrasted with this tiny little top snail. Oh, and another little lace. So that's another little lace murex with its little delicate lacy ends on it. Anything else? Oh, I see a top snail. Yep. Oh dear. Well, most of a top snail. And another shark eye. Let's see if we can figure out. <laughs> Let's see if we can figure out. It looks like a doesn't have that gouged out area there. So that, my friends, is a real shark eye. So in addition to nice shells you just find, they got some good tinies here too. Well, hi there, banded tulip. You should probably come with me. Awesome banded tulip. Nice size. And this is a jingle, also known as a baby's foot. So let me see if I can kind of get the right angle for you. How about there? Okay, so that area there, that's actually where the muscle of the animal attaches to the shell and it leaves that little mark on it that someone decided looks like a baby's foot. So in addition to jingles, these are also known as baby's feet. Another shell with a couple of names. Is it a pea? Oh, you never know. Could be a little piece. Could be the whole shell. I got lucky again. Eh, I just, yeah, we'll just look at that one. But we'll hold on to this one. Lovely lightning whelk. Oh man, very cool. So that is another apple murex. Fantastic size. No, so much lighter. Like some of them. They're dark, they, the colors vary. They're usually the earth tones and it goes anywhere from like orange to yellow to dark brown. The wind is whipping, the gulf is really kind of roiling. Still happy as a clam to be out here though. So let's see what else might have washed in because the tide is coming in, although it was so low that it can come in for quite a while and it's still going to be negative. So it was just a very, very low tide day. Very, very fun day to be out looking for seashells. Now this is another apple murex, but it's very, very dark. So this one, they had those variations in colors. The shape will always be very similar, but the colors are going to vary a little bit. That is a nice dark brown apple murex. <gasps> oh. <laughs> so that is the top of a true tulip. Yeah, just the top. What? Oh, cool. It is another hinged spiny jewel box. All right. Definitely keep, I mean, I just definitely keep, I keep all the spiky jewel boxes. Definitely keep the hinged ones. Rarely find so many in one day. Whoa, look at that jingle load of beach stuff. That would be not a baby's foot, like a Sasquatch foot. That is a huge jingle. Awesome. Don't normally find them that big. Oh, hi. Another perfect little sand dollar. I mean, it's like perfect. So pretty. Oh, check this out. So this is called a gray knicker nut. I thought it was just called the sea bean, but after I did a little bit of research, it turns out this is called a knicker nut. I like the sound of that. I wish I would find them more often, those knicker nuts. And this is a calico scallop. Nice little sunbeam pattern kind of going on there. Well, that's weird, a sand dollar. Awesome. I knew they would be here. If you come to Marco, you're probably going to find sand dollars. Now this is a horseshoe crab that has shed its exoskeleton. So that is just actually the exoskeleton, just like a snake would shed its skin. These guys also shed their shells. 
so they can grow and get bigger. I think they're really kind of cool. I'm not going to collect this today. I might on another day, but I got too much going on today. I'm not going to collect that. This is a pear whelk egg casing. We're going to start seeing these kind of show up on the beach a lot more. So there's little itty bitty shells in there. And that's how those guys start out their life. Some start as like larva and they swim or they freely swim around. The pear whelks happen to, you know, they're little baby shells in those egg casings. We'll find some. Spring does mean babies. Now that island over there is Kais. And we are going to be headed there next week. So we are going to finish. I'm going to round up though. We're going to take a look at everything we found in just a sec. And then next week we're going to Kais. We're going to talk about kayak safety and wind. Maybe we'll say hi to a couple of Marco Island police. Truly an adventure. But today wasn't too shabby either. I did find a mountain of sand dollars, which was really awesome. A couple of the Florida conchs, I kept myself under control. Some of those Sunray Venuses, I got a little out of control with those, but that's okay. Some moon snails, including the gaudies, the shark eyes, probably some false shark eyes, some top snails. Did find a couple of scallops and that nigger nut. A couple of turkey wings, some apple murex, a couple lace murex, uh, some nutmeg, some olives, the horse conchs, the pear whelks, the lightning whelks. What else we got? Um, we did get some banded tulips, that one true tulip. And then we're kind of getting to my favorite section, which is all those spiny jewel boxes, the limpet, and that alphabet cone. It was so fun. I don't know that I love the rain, but I'd do it again. I had the beach to myself. So this was a super fun walk. Patreons, thank you. Thank you so much for supporting me and helping me try to really build this channel up to be something great. And everybody else, thank you so much for coming along with me. I always read your comments. So thank you so much for the love. And like I said, we'll be going over to Kais next week and it's going to be an adventure. Let's just say I took one for the team. So you have a great week and I'll see you again next Sunday.